Hello everybody, this is Mr. Matthew again for Honors Biology. We're going to talk about how meiosis determines uh, which genes are passed on to offspring via gametes in sexual reproduction. So in this video, I'm going to do a quick overview of meiosis, um, and I'm also going to talk about why it's important for the daughter cells to have uh, half the genetic information of the adult cells. Again, we're looking at a, you know, a typical diploid organism like an animal or a plant, and then what we will do here is we will undergo a comparison of mitosis and meiosis. And then lastly, I'll talk about the various sources of genetic variation that occur throughout this process. Now, the last thing to talk about in here is we'll hit some key vocabulary terms, and I'll talk about those when talking about meiosis alone, and then I'll also hit upon those when doing the comparison of mitosis and meiosis. All right, so in this particular uh, case, I'm going to summarize the process of meiosis, and we're going to talk about why it's important for those daughter cells to end up having half the genetic information. So let's start with a brief pause and think. And in this pause and think, what I want you to do is I would like you to think about what would happen if we did not reduce the number of chromosomes when making gametes. Why don't you pause and think? All right, so hopefully what you came up with is that when you go and look at the idea of producing a gamete, if the gametes had the same number of cells as um, the adult organism, it, and we just took, say, in this particular example, we start with a cell that has four chromosomes, and this produced gametes of four chromosomes. When those four chromosomes fuse with the four chromosomes of another individual, you would end up with eight chromosomes in the offspring. Well, what happens in the next generation? Well, if we take eight chromosomes, they match up with somebody else who has eight chromosomes, you'd end up with 16. And what you'd end up having is that each generation, you'd double the number of chromosomes that are found in cells. So by going through the process of reducing the number of chromosomes to half and producing haploid gametes, this allows adult organs organisms to conserve the same number of chromosomes each generation. So in our sample here, we are looking at an example that is starts with a cell in interphase, and this interphase cell has four uh, chromosomes in it, so the diploid number in this is four. Uh, you'll notice that there are two larger chromosomes and two slightly smaller chromosomes, and so we're gonna I'm gonna have two number one chromosomes and two number two chromosomes. During the process of interphase, these will go from single chromatid chromosomes to double chromatid chromosomes, and then what we'll end up seeing is that those chromosomes will undergo the process of synapsis or crossing over as it moves from that first image into that second image. So in that second image, what you see is the homologous chromosomes after a tetrad has formed, and a tetrad is when you have the four chromatids from chromosome one and the four chromatids from chromosome two, they line up in their individual pairings so that you have four chromatids together. That's why it's called a tetrad. And during that time, you have the crossing over of uh, regions from the two chromosomes. So if in this instance, uh, and the coloring is not particularly important, it's not realistic, but let's say that the red chromosomes came from this individual's mother and the uh, bluish gray ones came from the uh, father, what we're seeing here is now we're producing these unique chromosomes that are not identical to the grandparent generation uh, when we go and make those gametes. All right, the next key thing to talk about is what happens between the second picture and this third picture as we finish up meiosis one and f move into the beginning of meiosis two, and this is going to be the process known as reduction division. In reduction division, we see the number of chromosomes is going to be reduced by half. So in this case, we're going from four chromosomes down to two chromosomes in each of these daughter cells. This is going to be known as reduction division, going from diploid to haploid cells. So now we have haploid cells at the beginning of meiosis two. We will finish going through meiosis two where we will separate the sister chromatids apart. And now we're going to also have haploid daughter cells at the end of meiosis two. And these will be the gametes. If this is in the case of female reproduction in humans, these would not be evenly divided. We only end up with one uh, large egg cells and then some polar bodies. And then males, this would produce four specific sperm. Uh, a little bit. All right, so now let's talk about this concept of variation. And so when I talk about the concept of variation, what am I looking at? There's a lot of different types of variation that we could talk about, but specifically when it comes to what occurs 
during meiosis, there are going to be three major things we're going to talk about. One is the idea of the assortment of the chromosomes. So when we go to line the chromosomes up in meiosis one, we have a few different options about how to arrange them. So again, we talked about the idea of chromosomes from mom and chromosomes from dad, but let's say I arrange it and I arrange it like this. You'll see in this particular case, we see that um, we have one red and one bluish gray of each of the types going into the daughter cells. But there's no rule that says I couldn't send the two red chromosomes or predominantly red chromosomes to one daughter cell and the two predominantly blue gray ones to the other. And as a result, it's that a assortment of the chromosomes that happens in meiosis one is one of the reasons why we get um, a lot of variation within this. And obviously this is a diploid number of only four. And when we talk about humans, we're talking a diploid number of 46. So lots more variation that you can generate that way. Another form of variation that we get in this process is the synapsis or crossing over that occurs. So as again, we see in this diagram, there are little pieces of the red chromosome exchanged with little pieces of the blue chromosome. Because of the fact that this can occur, we increase genetic variation. So every time this happens, we're producing a brand new chromosome and therefore we're shuffling the genes a little bit more. This is another one of those sources of variation. It doesn't cross over in the same location every time. It doesn't have to even cross over at all. And so the fact that sometimes there's crossing over or that crossing over occurs in different locations is another source of variation. The last component is the fact that we produce four genetically unique daughter cells here and when we have a reproduction, only one of these four daughter cells is going to merge with the daughter cell of another individual. In other words, there's going to be a random combination of which gametes come from which parent. This is another layer of variation that occurs. Okay, so these are all three sources of variation that are generated through the process of meiosis. There is another form of variation that we haven't talked about. So that's my last question. I'd like you to pause and think for a minute. What do you think another source of variation could be that could increase the variation beyond the assortment of the chromosomes crossing over and the random selection of gametes in the reproduction? Pause and think. What's another source of variation? Okay, so hopefully what you came up with is the ultimate source of genetic variation that occurs. And we have not talked about this yet, but there's another source of genetic variation aside from the assortment of the chromosomes, the crossing over, and the combination of gametes. We also have mutation. So there are also changes of DNA that can occur. Now, changes of DNA do not occur um, very often, but these will, are often referred to as the ultimate source of genetic variation that occurs within a chromosome uh, or within DNA, and these will also add into whole new forms of, of alleles or whole new arrangements of DNA. And so this is another source of variation that occurs. So uh, in addition to these uh, three sources that are all associated with meiosis, there's also the, the variation that comes as a result of uh, mutations. All right, I hope that was helpful, and I will talk to everybody soon.